Hi everyone, welcome to this video about Ensemble Comparative Genomics Data. My name's Erin and I'm one of the Ensemble Outreach Officers. Today's session is going to cover gene-based resources in Ensemble, so including things such as power logs and author logs and gene trees. And this will be followed by another session to be uploaded shortly about sequence-based resources, which will include things such as synteny and whole genome alignments. So we're going to start with a short presentation, which is followed by a demo on how to find out this data in Ensemble. And if you're only interested in the demo, please feel free to skip ahead to the time shown below. Otherwise, let's get started. OK, so let's just clarify what's going to be covered in this presentation. So we have gene-based resources. That's what we're going to talk about today. So that includes phylogenetic trees. And these are split into protein trees and non-coding RNA trees. Stable ID mapping and protein families. Um, this is all going to include um, orthologs and paralogs, which are derived from the phylogenetic tree data. In an upcoming session, as I said earlier, we'll be talking about sequence based resources, including whole genome alignments, um, which is used to infer ancestral sequences, age of base, conservation scores, and so on. So let's move on and define some key terms. Starting with homology, this is an umbrella term that covers both paralog and an ortholog. And broadly, it means the specific sequences that descended from the same common sequence in an ancestor. Paralogs arise from sequences of by duplication, and these can be both within and between species. And I'll go on to explain that further in the next few slides. And orthologs are genes that are derived from a common ancestor through vertical descent or speciation. Here we have a tree showing hypothetical relationships between genes found in human, HSAP, and mouse, and MUS, on this diagram. Paralogs arise from duplication events, as I said before, which are shown on the ensemble gene trees as a red square at the branch of the tree, as you can see highlighted here with the circles. So you can have a within-species paralog where the duplication has occurred after speciation, and a between-species paralog where the duplication occurred before speciation. Orthologs, on the other hand, arise directly from speciation events, but are also linked to paralogs. We can have a simple one-to-one -one ortholog where there has been no duplication after the species diverged, we also have many-to-many -many orthologs, where after speciation the gene has duplicated in both species being compared, and also a one-to-many ortholog, where after speciation one species has experienced a gene duplication event, but the other has not, and only one copy of that gene that was present in the ancestral species is present as well. So how do we build trees for the species on Ensemble? There are two methods for creating phylogenetic trees, one pathway for protein-coding genes, and one for non-coding or nCRNA genes. We'll have a look at the protein coding gene trees first. Here we start with a gene translation protein sequence. For human, we use the consensus coding sequence, or CCDS. In other species, we just use the longest transcript. We then compare the sequence with all other protein sequences within the same species, and across all the other species in Ensemble using BLAST. We then loosely cluster these and perform an alignment from which we build the phylogenetic tree based on this BLAST cluster. We then determine orthology and parology within this tree and assign a stable ID to the gene tree, which I'll go into in a bit more detail later on. The process is a bit different for non-coding RNA genes. This is because the non-coding RNA genes share a similar secondary structure without necessarily having very similar sequences. Also, each site in a sequence does not evolve independently and therefore the rules are a bit different to what would apply to normal protein coding genes. So rather than starting with an protein translation, we import nCRNA family models from RFAM. We then identify those which occur in Ensemble already and filter our extra copies which we use to determine gene gain and losses. We then run two pipelines in parallel, one for secondary structure alignments and one for the genomic sequence. We then build trees separately for these and then merge them at a later date. So as I said earlier, we assign a stable ID to our trees, and if they change when new data is incorporated into Ensemble, we keep the ID the same and you can use our ID history converter to see when the tree was updated. Similar to other stable IDs for genes, transcripts and proteins, these start with ENS for Ensemble, so the GT in the name stands for gene tree, just as ENSP is for protein and ENST is for transcript. The four R's are unique to gene trees and this shows the release version of when this gene tree first occurred. So if we created a new gene tree in the current release, Ensemble 92, then this would be 0092. This is followed by the unique identifying number, which is 10 digits in length. And you can see an example here at the bottom. So we have ENSGT0056, which indicates that this gene tree would have been first described in Ensemble 56. Moving away from phylogenetic trees now, let's quickly look at gene and protein families. These are identified as a group of genes or proteins that share a common evolutionary origin. This is typically reflected by their similar function or sequence or structure. 
The way that we determine these is by using a genomic sequence data from our database and protein data from Uniprot. We use Panther and TrueFam data to determine the families and assign an ID based on the Panther database and then embellish the family with additional information and links to the other family members. As you can see in this table at the bottom, we have the family ID listed, the PTHR number, um, consensus annotation for that family, and then it links out to other proteins of that same family in Ensemble as well. So that covers what I wanted to say today about uh, how the data is generated in Ensemble, and we'll crack on now to the demo. If anyone's interested in finding out more information about how the data is created though, you can follow this link at the top to see our latest publication, or check out the help and documentation on the website as well. Okay, so here I am on the Ensemble homepage, ensemble.org. We have the header at the top with quick links to useful tools such as the VEP or Biomart, which are covered in other tutorials on our YouTube channel, as well as help and documentations if you're stuck at any point, you can access this from any page in Ensemble. We're going to be looking at the gene TP53, so I'm going to type that into the search box, the main one here, in the centre of the screen, TP53. I haven't specified a species, but as human is the most popular species in Ensemble, it comes up at the top. If I click on the gene name here, it'll take me straight to the gene tab, but also note that there are quick links at the bottom if you want to skip to specific pages. I'm going to click on this main link here, TP53. So here we get to the gene summary page. We're in the gene tab. You can see information about transcripts of this gene and gene ID synonyms in the summary section here. We can opt to expand the transcript table if we want to see all the different transcripts of this gene. We can see that there's quite a lot in this gene here. It's quite a large gene. I'm going to hide the transcript table for now. We're interested in comparative genomics in this particular presentation, so I'm going to click directly on the gene tree to show you this first. So now we're on the section for the gene tree. You can see that this section of the page has stayed the same as on the summary page. So if we scroll down, then we'll be able to see the full gene tree. It starts at the top with the summary section here, where we can see the gene tree ID. As I explained in the presentation, this is a unique identifier for this particular tree. We can see it's ENSGT for gene tree, and 0039 indicates that this was first published in Ensemble version 39. We also have some summary statistics at the top here, so number of genes and different types of nodes that are present in this tree. And if we scroll down to look at the actual gene tree image itself, we can see that this is split into about three sections. So we have the main section here, which is indicating the actual gene tree itself. On the right hand side, we can see the protein alignments for these genes. And below we have the legend, which describes all the different types of nodes and the alignment scores and so on. On the image itself, the gene and species of interest is highlighted with the red text, as you can see here, TP53 human. And the closest nodes or branch points to it are expanded, so we can see the closest relatives to human, such as chimpanzees and gorilla, have all been expanded. A number of nodes have been collapsed, as you can see by these grey funnels, but we can expand them if we were interested, so if I click on the node here, this brings up a pop-up which tells me about how many genes were in that node that's been collapsed, so in this case two. What type of node this is, so speciation node here. And options to export the subtree or view it in other viewers as well, such as Wasabi. I'm going to click on the expand this subtree option. And you can see now that the chimpanzee T53 node has been expanded and now shows both chimpanzee and bonobo. The colour of the nodes, as I said in the presentation, indicate the event that lead to that branch, for example a duplication or speciation event. You can find out what the colours mean by looking at the legend or by clicking on the node as I just demonstrated. So if we click on a red node now, we'll see that this says duplication and the confidence of that as well. I'm just going to close this now. So if we click on a species name, we'll see a list of different options. I'm going to click on Bonobo. What we have here is a pop-up that allows us to view the species homepage for Bonobo. We can click on the gene ID and that will take us to a similar gene tab within the species that we're interested in and tell us where the location of that gene is in that species. We also have an option to view protein sequences and also viewing this in a number of different resources such as Genomicus, PhileMDB and TreeFan. It also tells us some information about the gene such as that it's protein coding and it's on the reverse strand. I'm just going to click to close this now. 
if we scroll to the bottom of the page, we'll see some options to quickly filter the image that we see above. So we can opt to view current gene tree only, view paralogs of the current gene, view all duplication nodes, or view a fully expanded tree. Also at the bottom, we have the option to collapse the nodes of taxonomic rank. So we could see only the species or at a higher level, such as the order or the phylum, and that would collapse the relevant nodes that we're interested in. So perhaps after editing your image and opening up specific nodes that you're interested in, you might want to download or export or share this with your colleagues. So we can share this image. If you've expanded any particular nodes or added paralogs, for, for example, if you click on this, you'll get a stable URL and this will remember which nodes have been expanded and collapsed and so on. So you'll be able to share this exact image with your colleagues. I'm just going to close this. We also have an option to export the image, which will be able to capture the image as you see it in Ensemble in a range of different formats, depending on what your purposes are. So for example, a journal format or a PDF. If you're not sure of what these specifications are, you can hover over the eyes over here and it'll tell you exactly what that image will look like and dimensions and so on. If we click and close this. The final option is to download the data from this image. So if we click on this icon, we can see that we have a range of different formats in which we can download this data as. What's particularly useful is once you've selected a format that you're interested in, either from the drop-down box or by clicking on the image, you can see a preview of that data. And you have the option to download as it is or as a compressed file as well. So now let's look at orthologs. If we click on the ortholog section on the left-hand navigation panel under the comparative genomics section. So this again takes us to another page where this top section is the same. I'm going to scroll down. Immediately see that we have an option to download orthologs. Again, very similar to the layout that we had for the gene tree. So this page is split into three sections. At the top we have a summary table, which allows us to quickly filter out the main table below. This groups them by taxonomic group. It tells us how many species are in that group and also breaks it down into how many different types of orthologs we have. If you're not sure about what any of these mean, you can always hover over and it will tell you a short definition. So we have one-to-one -one orthologs, one-to-many orthologs, many-to-many -many orthologs, and species without any orthologs at all. I'm going to hide this table now. You can see that we've come to the main table. I'm going to come back to this in a second. I'm just going to hide this for now. And at the bottom of the page, we have the section which says, of all the species in Ensemble, which ones do not have any orthologs for this gene? So that you can see these summarized here. And you can see we also have the outgroups of C. elegans and Saccharomyces, for example, here as well, indicating that they don't have any orthologs for this gene. I'm going to expand that table again, and I'll just walk you through this. So this table shows all the species and ensemble that have an ortholog with this gene in alphabetical order. So we're starting off with the Algerian mouse. You can see the ortholog type. Again, if you're unsure of the definition, you can always hover over. You have the options to view the gene tree view sequence alignments. So if we click on this, it will give us an option to view both a protein or a cDNA alignment if we're interested. It also shows us the gene name in that species. More often than not, it's still TP53, as you can see below. In this case, it isn't. And then we have these different measures on the right. And I'll just go through what these mean. So the first column is DNDS. This is a ratio that estimates the balance of synonymous and non-synonymous, or missense, substitutions. So whether an ortholog in a different species has had a change in the amino acid and therefore protein sequence. The closer th this is to one indicates that there are fewer non-synonymous substitutions, so the protein sequence is much more similar. This ratio is also referred to as the KAKS ratio. The target percentage ID is how much of the orthologous sequence, i.e. the gene from Algerian mouse, matches the subject species sequence, i.e. the gene in human. On the flip side of this, the query percentage ID is how much of the subject species sequence, i.e. the gene in human, matches the ortholog, i.e. the gene in Algerian mouse. These numbers will be similar if the genes are the same length. If there was a short human gene that was orthologous to a larger Algerian mouse gene, we would see the target percentage ID decrease, as a lot of the Algerian mouse gene would not have a match to the short human gene. Simultaneously, we would see the query ID increase as a human gene would probably overlap completely with the Algerian mouse gene as it is much shorter. The GOC score stands for Gene Order Conservation Score, and this is how well the order of genes is conserved between species. 
So what is upstream and downstream of TP53, whether this is the same in this species as it is in human, which is the subject species. In this case it's 100, which means that it's identical. A whole genome alignment coverage column indicates how much of the whole genome is perfectly aligned between these two species, so it's about 50% in Algerian mouse compared to human. And the final column is high confidence. This is where we indicate whether we're fully confident that this gene in Algerian mouse is an ortholog to TP53 in human. In this case it is yes, because it has quite a high target and query ID, as well as a strong GOC score. We can see that the score is no in um, Zimboli below the Algerian mouse, because the gene order of conservation score is very low and the target and query IDs as well are also below 50% here. So we've had a look at orthologs, now let's move on to paralogs. So what we have here is a list of genes that have evolved from duplication at some point in the past alongside TP53. These are called TP63 and TP73. And we have options to view uh, region comparisons protein and cDNA alignments, as well as to view these genes directly in Ensemble. Similar to the ortholog table, we also have target ID and query ID. Let's quickly look at protein families, in which we'll see some similar information. So now we're on the protein family page. You can see the panther ID here, indicating there are four genes included in this group. We have a consensus annotation of a cellular tumor antigen, and a list of all the other proteins that are present in this family. If we click on four genes here, we'll be able to see all of the genes within this family. So this shows us the location of these genes across the genome, and also a list at the bottom here. We can see the paralogs TP63 and 73 that we saw in the paralog page as well. So if I scroll up, the final thing I want to show you is the gene gain and loss tree. Here we have an extensive gene tree of all the species in Ensemble. If we scroll right down to the bottom, we can see the legend. Where the lines are red, we can see there's a significant expansion of this gene family, and the queried species is showing up in red. So if we scroll up, we find human here with three members in this gene family. If we scroll up, we'll be able to see where there's significant expansion. For example, Mars night monkey has a significant expansion in this gene as does elephant, with 14 members in this gene family. You can quickly choose between seeing a full and minimal tree, which will remove the outgroups. Saccharomyces, for example, you can see disappears at the top. And we can also switch between radial and vertical views, so you have a circular family, which may be easier to compare for you. You can once again download data from this image, or export the image, or share with your colleagues. So that concludes our short presentation and demo on comparative genomics. We've covered phylogenetic trees, stable ID mapping and protein families, and shown you how to access the data in Ensemble. Next time we're going to be looking at sequence-based resources, so more about alignments and synteny. So keep an eye out for updates when this video becomes available.